Hey, folks, thanks for being here at the Crypto and Privacy Village. We have another fantastic talk lined up. Our very own Jake Williams, Malware Jake, from Rendition InfoSec. He's going to be talking about the semantic SSL debacle, lessons learned, and future steps. So please give it up for Jake. And now you're going to give me a minute to readjust this mic, because apparently we only have one. So, uh, which is cool, uh, and, and it's not cordless, so if I trip on this, somebody be prepared. Does that mean no first aid? No? Okay. I can't stand behind a podium for, for half an hour or an hour or whatever we're going to do here. I think we've got like 45 minutes or something. Um, so, uh, this is something that was really, really interesting to me uh, when it first hit. Uh, I'm really, really interested in SSL in the first place. Uh, I think SSL is a dumpster fire. Right, uh, and, and hopefully by the end of this talk, uh, you share some of those same opinions, and if not, you at least understand why I think SSL is a dumpster fire and, and kind of what we need to be thinking about as InfoSec people. Uh, and <clears throat> I look around here, and I'm guessing that uh, maybe I've got 10-ish percent decision makers and a lot of influencers, a lot of technical influencers, right? So uh, my goal here is for the decision makers to make sure you understand what's going on and for the influencers uh, to give you some of the arguments to go back and, and talk to folks and communicate effectively uh, with your decision makers so they can make the right decisions. So I wanna talk about the Symantec SSL issue. Uh, originally, I wasn't gonna do a lot of this. I was just gonna kinda assume everybody knew. And uh, over the last couple of weeks, I've been uh, teaching SANS around the world, actually in three different countries over the last month. Uh, and I found out that uh, by polling uh, InfoSec people, uh, I found out that uh, almost nobody understands this. So I revamped the slide deck a lot. Uh, then this week, uh, Google pulled a nasty on me uh, and they reached an, a tentative agreement with Symantec on how they're gonna move forward. So then I had to overhaul a bunch of stuff in the slide deck because obviously then I've got, uh, you know, uh, can't talk about like, well, we don't know how this is gonna end. We actually have some idea how it's gonna end. Uh, of course, we'll have to see how that all plays out, but we at least have an idea, right? Uh, so I I've been pulling data too. I'm a data guy. Uh, I really, really like data. I'll make my data sets uh, publicly available later. Uh, if anybody's really interested, follow me on Twitter. I, I promise you I'll tweet out links to the data sets when I get them up in GitHub. Uh, but basically, uh, over the last several months, we've been pulling uh, certificates, and I'll talk more about some of our methods here. We've been going out and pulling SSL certificates from the Alexa Top 1 million. Uh, now, I, I know that this is not necessarily the best data set, but it's a consistent data set. So back in uh, April, this whole thing started in March. Uh, back in April, we went ahead and uh, grabbed, early April, grabbed the Alexa Top 1 million. We haven't updated that since because I want a consistent set of sites, right? I want to be able to watch the drift uh, across uh, basically how certificates change and, and what are people doing with certificates that are different because I would think that this industry-wide uh, announcement of intent to deprecate trust in Symantec would, would force change in people. Uh, for those that don't know me, I'm a big psychology guy too. I actually minored in psych back in the day in my undergrad and I love psychology. So I'm, I'm all really interested in the psychological aspect of this, right? Uh, some of these message, messages came out and people are renewing certificates. Did they do stuff differently? And, and uh, unfortunately, the answer there is not a lot, actually. It's, it's kind of scary. Uh, I want to talk about some of the uh, stuff that we're dealing with here. This is not the first time we've dealt with the intent to deprecate a cert. And it's definitely not the first time that we've dealt with <clears throat> not only an intent to deprecate a cert, but the need for mass cert revocation, and yet we're treating it like it's the first time, right? And uh, so I wanna have a couple of closing thoughts and, and kind of fire away on a couple of ideas. Uh, I'll give you a little trigger warning here. If you think at the end I've got a solution for this, I do not, right? Uh, I like that, I, I tend to want to provide a solution, right, to provide a problem, talk about the problem space, and then show up with a solution. I am not smart enough, apparently, uh, because I've been racking my brain, I've been talking to a lot of other really smart people, and nobody uh, that I've talked to has a good solution for this. Right? So the issue, why are we even having the talk in the first place? Uh, the, the start of this is that Symantec, their subordinate CAs, uh, Symantec and or their subordinate CAs, uh, they misissued a number of certificates. And originally, this was found through an audit, and original, originally it was about 12 certificates, and now we know that it's somewhere on the order of 30,000 certificates. Right? So, um, and part of the problem that Google had uh, was that over time the number kept growing and growing and growing and there were addendums upon addendums upon addendums to the final report, right? Uh, obviously this is never a good thing, right? You have a final report and, and again, we're not talking about a final report. We all work in InfoSec, right? I presume most of you work in InfoSec somewhere and, and you know that when you 
perform an audit, for goodness sakes. Uh, there's always data that skeletons in the closet, stuff that was uh, swept under the rug, stuff that you find during an audit that you didn't find otherwise. But it's rare that I ever go back and I have to issue an addendum to my final report and it's rare that I have to issue an addendum to the addendum to the final report and, and I've never issued an addendum to the addendum to the addendum to the final report which is what Symantec continued to do here, right? Uh, separately from this, this is not a regular audit, right? But part of this uh, key here is that when you operate a certificate authority, you are bound by a number of regulations to, to track data. This would be like going into a bank audit and asking them, for instance, how much money is in the vault, and they're like, hold on a second while we, while we go count that stuff. That's not okay, right? Uh, and it's not okay here either, right? We're talking about the web of trust for the entire internet. Uh, what else? Uh, Symantec failed to track the activities of its affiliated CAs and the really cool part here is if you read into this uh, or read uh, through this a little bit, they have this uh, geo, uh, basically this geo trust or geo root uh, initiative and uh, basically in this geo root initiative they are signing uh, basically certificates for what they call registration authorities, RAs. And these RAs, basically their job is to validate that you are who you say you are. So, so picture for a moment that you have this whole proxy arrangement, right? I, I can vouch for you, but, but I might vouch for you without even knowing you. And it's the registration authority that's actually validating that you are who you say you are. And they say, hey Jake, right? And I, of course I know this person. I says, hey Jake, go vouch for this guy and I just do it. Now, here's where things get interesting because over the years, Symantec has bought a lot of uh, RAs. They bought a lot of other certificate authorities. VeriSign, for instance, right, uh, is, is one that they bought. Thought is another one that they bought that used to be just absolutely huge, right? Um, what's really, really interesting here is that Symantec, in one of their audits, failed to disclose one of their registration agents, one of their RAs. And in the later audit, they found out as Google challenged them and said, hey, you forgot to put this in your transparency report. They were like, that's not ours. And Google's like, oh no, you're signing search for these people. <laughs> now, when you step back and you think, how bad is this, right? Now, I'm paraphrasing a lot here. Go read the docs. I, I understand this stuff is dry, but it's important and it's dry. Hopefully, I'll get enough out there that you can speak intelligently to this anyway. Uh, Symantec cross-signed a root certificate used by the U.S. federal government. And look, uh, initially this is probably not bad if you live in the U.S. and 100% trust the U.S. government. Of course I do, <laughs> right? I mean, I live in the U.S. and I don't trust the U.S. government. It's ridiculous, right? Uh, Symantec issued test certificates and search for unregistered domains. Now, uh, some folks, and particularly Symantec, have tried to move the narrative along that one of the reasons Google is so mad about this is that one of the test certificates that they issued, uh, I don't even know what a test certificate, well, what Symantec says a test certificate is, is a, a certificate they legitimately signed for a domain that they do not own, that they use for testing. One of them that they signed was for Google. And you can imagine this made Google a little annoyed because what would one do with this? Who the knows, right? And so, uh, they, now Symantec comes back and says, look, these certs never ever made it out of the wild and yet Google figured it out. So anyway, there's like some, some interesting crosstalk going on there and some, hmm. I will tell you that as you read this, you cannot come as a rational person, as a, as a rational analyst, you cannot come to any other conclusion reading Symantec's responses than they were 100% asleep at the wheel. And rather than saying, hey guys, we were asleep at the wheel, we don't know what we're gonna do now, help us out, at every turn they deny, deny, deny. It's, it's like watching politicians debate. It's absolutely nuts. Uh, so <clears throat> our CA is officially too big to fail. Uh, look, the issues with Symantec were serious. Uh, Google earlier dumped Wosign and Startcom. They said, look, we're not gonna trust these guys anymore and they gave us about a month to knock this stuff out, a month and a half to knock out uh, Wosign and Startcom. Uh, admittedly, Wosign and Startcom were relatively small. And if you read the Google document, uh, basically uh, from Chrome, or the Chrome team basically saying that they're ready to dump uh, support for Symantec, but we're gonna phase it out over a period of more than a year, uh, you can see uh, throughout that they talk about how big Symantec is, what the impact is gonna be if they just go bam and drop it. Uh, and I step back and I have to say, look, uh, Symantec is apparently too big to fail in the context of uh, in the context, at least as far as Google and then Mozilla, which is following suit with Google, uh, is concerned. I, I think this is a big issue because if it's a security issue, it's a security issue no matter how big the, uh, the CA is. 
I might actually argue that if the CA is that large, the certificate authority is that large, the security issue is actually more serious because they're signing more certificates. And hence, we need to be ready to move faster with large certificate authorities than we need to with small certificate authorities that sign a very, very small number of certs. I'll finally say that in InfoSec, uh, as we're talking about this, uh, when I do security audits and I'm looking at best practices for organizations, I rate organizations that, let's say, have a $10 billion a year market cap differently uh, than somebody that has a $2 billion a year market cap. You have a different level of resources. Here, Symantec, my friends, has no excuse, right? And I'm gonna be very careful so I don't get sued, right? Because I'm sure there's someone from Symantec in here taking notes and ready to go. Uh, that's cool, no problem. Uh, but look, the originally proposed solution. Uh, basically, uh, <clears throat> there, was the, uh, there was the goal to go phase out over a number of releases and basically phase out trust for the Symantec certs that were signed during what we'll call the trouble period. Right? Uh, so by the beginning of the year, uh, by about February, it seems at least, and, and there's some missing transparency I think here from, from Google uh, as well as Symantec, but it seems that everybody's confident that whatever the issues were, well not whatever they were, but among the many, many issues, and I don't have all of them listed on the original slide there, there are many, many more, those are the most serious. Uh, <clears throat> based on the many issues that they found, they said, hey, we think we're good going forward, but that leaves us in a position where during the trouble period, we know we misissued around 30,000 certs. Well, at the time it was 100 certs, and then it was a many certs, and then it eventually was 30,000 certs. And so, Question then becomes, what do you do with those? Because some of those have lifetimes of five years easily, right? You can go in and you can uh, select if you're willing to pay the $15 a year or whatever it happens to be, depending on who your reseller is. You can go ahead and pay that and you can get a ridiculously long certificate life. Should you do that? That's a whole different security question, whole different security discussion. Uh, Google appeared to be interested then in, even as they reissued certs, they wanted to lower the validity. Symantec came back and said, look, this is punitive uh, because nobody else is going to be bound by these timelines, and, and, and they're right. Uh, Google, to their credit, came back and said, hey, uh, we get it, totally, but uh, you guys have been uh, negligent, I think as well, wait, 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 if there's a lawyer in the crowd for Symantec, I didn't use the word negligent, I was, in, I was paraphrasing there, maybe negligent isn't the word. Uh, you, you have been demonstrably careless in that sounds better. I'm not a lawyer, but mine reviewed this talk. So anyway, uh, so the uh, basically demonstrably careless in uh, doing this, uh, we think you're gonna do it again, right? Kind of like I've got a dieting problem, I ate too many cookies, and odds are good I'm gonna do it tonight too, right? Uh, so, so look, uh, seriously, that, that kind of thing going. Uh, and so they drop this down and they say, look, you know, consistently you're gonna have a lower and lower uh, validity periods here, and you're gonna have to live with that. Symantec then says, look, we've got predatory vendors jumping up and down, uh, basically contacting customers. And, and look, uh, if I'm a vendor, I totally would be doing this. Right? If I'm an SSL vendor, right, I would totally be contacting Symantec customers for two reasons. One, the majority of Symantec customers have no idea this is going on, right? or very limited uh, idea this is going on, at least initially. And to be fair, if the proposed solution rolls through, uh, it's gonna be difficult for you to, more difficult for you to stay with Symantec than it is to go with literally anybody else. Right? And, and if I'm a vendor, that seems like a really good market differentiation, and I would totally be pitching that to, uh, to people there. Uh, look, this is either dirty pool or good business, depending on where you sit and how you feel, and I don't know, if I'm Symantec, I call foul. Right? Uh, if I'm every other vendor, I'm like, heck yeah, I'm totally getting in on that game. Right? Uh, regardless, know that it happened, know that it's still happening, because the proposed solution, proposed now, new proposed solution was just ratified this week. Right? So, uh, know that it's nowhere near done, uh, and I would still expect other vendors to capitalize on this and try to capitalize. If you are a Symantec customer, uh, be very, very careful about what you do next. Uh, make a good, informed decision. Uh, my, my personal take, and, and I'll go ahead and, you know, in case anybody needs to cut out quickly, and you are a Symantec customer, my, my personal take is I, I just wouldn't continue with them. Um, and this has nothing to do with whether or not I believe they're doing good CA work today. My honest to goodness opinion there is no, they're not, but that's a whole separate issue. Uh, the reality is that they're already on probation, right? And I, I feel like everything else that happens from here is, is probably going to be viewed with a, uh, or responded to basically with a sledgehammer rather than a, uh, rather than a coddling like they've had so far, right? 
Uh, regardless, uh, just so you know that's happening, let's talk about the cross sign federal root, because this is cool. I like this, right? Uh, well, no, actually, I don't like this at all, but Symantec cross signed a bridge certificate. Uh, for the U.S. federal government. So the period of nearly five years, by the way, uh, Symantec, when they sign a root, this is not a certificate that they sign. I want to be very clear about this so everybody understands this. It's not a, a, a regular certificate. It's not like they, uh, for DOJ.gov, they signed a certificate, so you go to the website and get a little trusted icon there. They signed a root for the federal government, cross-signed a root for the federal government, and failed to report it. Now, any CA that's trusted is required absolutely required by the CA standards, by the Browser Alliance. Uh, actually, that sounds like the force or something, but you get the idea there, right? You know, so Mozilla, Opera, uh, or Mozilla, Apple, uh, Google, and uh, Microsoft to report when they sign new routes. They signed a route for the federal government, for the US federal government. And this certificate could be used without any further interaction from Symantec to sign certificates for anything. And you have to understand the severity of that. Because as much as I trust the federal government in the US, right? I think looking out here, the majority of you are probably from the US. Uh, that's fine. Step back and ask yourself, what would you be doing if this was China? If Symantec had signed a bridge certificate for China, how would you feel about that? China, are, you're, well, so, so hold on a second. China has roots, the Chinese government doesn't have, now you're arguing with me about is it China, now I'm getting there, so, so you're jumping ahead with me here. So, okay, look, if it was the Chinese government or the Somali government, they don't have a CA, uh, the Somali government were owned a, and then we had uh, certificate pirates running around, sounds actually like a new whiskey pirates kind of thing, but regardless, look, bottom line, I, I try not to put your tinfoil hats on here, but, but this is serious. Because we're talking about the same government that oversees NSA, CIA, and, and lots of organizations you probably don't trust. And when I step back and ask, uh, realistically, if you got redirected to a website that now had a brand new certificate signed by a trusted CA, would you know? I mean, I know like one guy that would know because he constantly is looking at certs and doing research on certs. And that's like the one guy, I e. Brotherson. And that's about it, right? I, I can't imagine any... I, I wouldn't notice, I'll be the first to tell you, most of our organizations wouldn't notice either. And uh, these can facilitate man in the middle attacks. And so once the transgression was discovered, and again, this is important to know this ran for five years, and once it was discovered, they didn't fix it. They waited, and they went back and forth about like the, hey, we're working on revoking this. I, this is too easy, it's literally you just revoke it. There's, there's a process in place for this, it's called a CRL. Right? So it took them five months to correct the issue. So I've got a couple of ideas here, right? Uh, why, why did it happen? General laziness? I don't know. Give the feds time to react to a PKI change. I, I don't know why this was necessary in the first place. The federal government on the browsers that they, or sorry, on the uh, sites that they use, they, they issue their own certs anyway. If you've ever been in the military or worked with any of those folks, you know you have to go install root, uh, which is weird anyway, but you gotta go install the root. They didn't need to deal with this, right? So, uh, give the feds time to react to the PKI change. Maybe Symantec just doesn't want to be a CA, and the five months seemed like a great way to kind of bridge that, uh, you know, be like, they can't say, it's kind of like a polite no bid. Somebody comes up, asks you to work a job, and your, your normal rate is like, you know, here, and you're like, I'm gonna go bid it way up here, kind of thing. You don't want to tell them no, but maybe Symantec's like that. They're like, ah, eh, we're, we're done with the CA business, but I'm gonna piss off all our customers, so we'll just, we'll just get beat, you know, beat down. I, I, I don't know, or possibly, it's to give feds time to abuse the soon to be lost capability. And I'm not gonna tell you which one I think it is, right, because I don't wanna put a tinfoil hat on up here. But, but, if you knew you had a capability and you had a very, very limited time left to use it, what would you do with it? Anyway, about the issuing of test certificates, right? So Symantec issued test certificates for legitimate in the wild domains. They also did it for thousands of domains that were unregistered. And this is a huge separate issue, right? Because if I'm able to get a cert for a site that you may register later, or a domain that you may register later, and then I already have the valid cert, you can see how this could be abused for, for man in the middle activity. I might actually have a cert for, for a domain that you own, and you don't have any cert for the domain, right? Imagine that, that's, uh, wow. Uh, Symantec says uh, these test certificates were never actively in use. Google, of course, was able to discover it. There's no legitimate purpose for this. And particularly for a site as big as Google.com. 
right? There's no legitimate use for this. There's no legitimate use for this. By the way, I, I feel it's probably appropriate to mention that uh, Symantec, uh, the owner of a very, very large root CA uh, who has cross-signed uh, certificates against guidance without reporting it previously, uh, now also owns some very interesting HTTPS interception software stuff. Anyway, uh, I'll just throw that out there. I think they reached a deal with Bluecoat last year. Uh, wow, uh, gosh, that just hit me. Um, anyway. So <clears throat> improperly revoking certificates, right? So uh, Symantec, uh, even though uh, you know, these weren't related to Google, uh, Symantec this month, right? So, so I wanna put this in perspective because if you, don't, if you don't already feel like Symantec is a dumpster fire, right? And, and again, the lawyer in the room, I know you're here. I know you're here. Um, I'm not calling Symantec a dumpster fire. I'm just saying if these people aren't convinced that it's a dumpster fire, right, by now, Maybe this will convince you because while Symantec's already on probation, because this whole thing kicks off in February, uh, in early July, a gentleman named uh, Hanno Bach, I, I think Bach, I don't know, sounds German. Uh, anyway, he went and uh, bought some certificates for a couple of domains that he owns. He went out and registered a couple of crazy named domains and then went and bought some certificates. And so for their, there are four domains that he owns, and he bought some through Symantec, and he bought some through Komodo, and I think there was one other, uh, one other registrant or one other certificate provider he bought them through. And then he did something cool. He went and he revoked the certificate. He said, hey, my keys have been compromised. I need you to revoke the certificate. He used a different email to contact them. Basically said, hey, here's my private keys. I need you to revoke these because they've been compromised. Now, a CA, according to the Browser Alliance, has 24 hours upon notification of compromise of a private key to revoke the certificate. The kicker is they're supposed to validate the private key and see if you can figure out where this is going. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, a gap was identified, this is Symantec's response, a gap was identified in the public and private key matching process, also known as we forgot to validate the key. And what this means is that while Symantec is unaware of anybody having done this in the wild, that up until mid-July, up until two weeks ago, you could have sent them some random binary string and said, hey, this is the private key for blah domain. It's been compromised. I need you to revoke the cert. Right? Now, there's math that you can do to validate this. Symantec knows all about this. That's how they create the certs in the first. I presume they know about this. That's how they create the certs. On Actually, you know what? Forget it. I don't even presume they know this anymore. But <clears throat> look, uh, that's how they create the certs in the first place. And you can mathematically validate that this private key is the real private key. And so picture the power that you had in your hands to shut down operations. Because suppose for a minute that we take a large provider like Amazon or something, and we go and validate their cert, their private key, due to a private key compromise. Now, I think, some, I think Symantec would have been smart enough not to do it for Symantec, but you can picture other, or sorry, Symantec wouldn't do it for Amazon. They seem pretty big. Seems like somebody might have gone, really, Amazon? Seriously, they don't want a key reissue or anything? Or <laughs> I think they'd have been smart enough to see that, right? But, but there are some mid-range sites that I think you could do some really serious damage with here. Uh, obviously, nobody's gone back and tested this again. I'm not encouraging you to test it again because it sounds a lot like fraudulent activity to me, but if you're so inclined, who am I to stop you? Uh, so <clears throat> no joke though, by the way, this is a neat attack vector uh, and it's something that you ought to try with whoever, wait, you should talk to your general counsel and then <laughs> you should try this with whoever your SSL providers are because uh, this is serious because once they revoke the cert, everybody gets an SSL warning, you know, this is a brand damage issue or possibly a business loss issue. Uh, so again, it's something that you should check, something you should know. So I want to talk about trust issues because I have lots of trust issues. This gentleman in the front row does as well. Uh, and I want to talk about who is your browser trusting anyway because the entire SSL model is based on trust in a lot of certs that I think if you looked at the people who own those certs, I think you would look and go, for instance, and, and I want to put this into perspective, when, when I consult with clients, and feel free to steal my analogies here, um, when I consult with clients, uh, I open up the list, we talk about this a lot for the, uh, for the browser trust, and we open up the list of certificates, and we look in Firefox, and we look in Chrome, uh, and we just say, look, um, would, you, would you hand them $1,000 and trust that in six months you're gonna get it back? And they're like, no, I wouldn't. I'm like, good, then pull, then pull trust, because what you're asking for is something way worse than that, right? You are asserting that these people 
can sign trusted certificates for literally anything. Right? Uh, many nation states, as this gentleman correctly pointed out, have virtual control over businesses operating in their borders. This does not align well with very complex threat models that most organizations have. Right? Now, I know what you're thinking. If you're a Chinese telecom, uh, I'm just going to use China as an example because it's always China. Actually, recently it's been always Russia, but whatever. Uh, Chinese telecom, uh, and you go sign a certificate. How does my traffic, if I'm just a US company, how does it even get there in the first place? Um, before we talk about that, uh, let's talk about a couple concerning ones, because Hong Kong Post right, does not look like somebody that I want to have for, why does the Hong Kong Post Office operate a CA that Firefox and the United States trusts? And is this necessary? And should you leave this talk and remove this from your browser, from your set of accepted certificates? Right, totally. And I feel fine saying that if there's a lawyer from the Hong Kong Post in here, game on, right? Um, <laughs> So, look, I'm just not, I'm not, not down with this. Is it being used? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, 38 of the Alexa top 1 million sites are secured with these. That's not the issue. If you're looking at that and you're hearing only 38 in 1, that's not the issue. It's not that it's 38 in 1 million. They can sign certs for anybody. That's the whole point of the trust, right? You are trusting them to sign a cert for literally anyone, right? And so, of course, then if we get that uh, man in the middle, uh, well, you get the idea. Okay. Uh, what about uh, Shenhua Telecom in Taiwan? Right? Again, this is another CA trusted by Mozilla and all the major browsers. Microsoft actually goes a step further because they're cool, uh, and they trust the China Financial Certification Authority, the CFCA. I don't even know who these people are, but they sound bad. And I don't mean bad from a, I don't like China, uh, just China's part of my threat model, because like half the intrusions I do are, are China. Right? That's just a reality. I operate here and I operate in Southeast Asia where as you can imagine, China's got a lot of vested interest in uh, what's going on, and yeah, I mean, so is it fear-mongering, right? Uh, no, no, this isn't fear-mongering. People have accused me of this. It's definitely not. I'm a low FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt kind of person. You combine this trusted CA with the ability to do man in the middle. If you're in a foreign country, ISP man in the middle should definitely be, th be a thing you are concerned with. DNS cache poisoning. I don't know if Dan Kaminsky's here. I haven't seen him tweeting yet uh, since he's been here. If he is, uh, don't fall asleep near Dan. That's a, that's a losing move. Um, or pass out near Dan, it's a losing move. Dan's an awesome guy, though. And Dan walked through a number of years ago DNS cache poisoning. And of course, uh, vendors rushed out to fix that uh, over the last several years. Right? And so he presented it here like in what? Uh, was it 2008, 2007? Right, so it's been nearly a decade since Dan presented how to do DNS cache poisoning, and trust me, it works. Right? And so as we look at this with DNS cache poisoning, uh, they can route traffic uh, basically from you in the US out to wherever it is they need to, or realistically, they don't even need to route it outside of the US. Uh, they just pick up a server in Amazon, uh, the Amazon cloud, or in Azure, and throw one of their trusted certs there and game on. But if you want to get into the really, really scary stuff, Take a look, my friends, at BGP hijacking. Uh, because this is where stuff gets crazy scary. And, and you talk about the SSL trust thing being an absolute dumpster fire, BGP is far worse. And if you're not looking at this, uh, go take a look. I don't know how I missed the E there. Uh, that's probably the British spelling. Anyway, uh, BGP uh, route hi or root, BGP root hijacking, uh, route hijacking is probably the easiest of these to track, right? Uh, if, you, if you're not following BGP stream on Twitter, uh, go check this out. It is an absolutely awesome account. And it tracks when somebody either intentionally or accidentally steals prefixes in the BGP system. Basically when some router somewhere says, oh, hey, I own these, go ahead and route that stuff over here. Now, look, sometimes I'm sure that that's a mistype. Uh, sometimes I'm sure that that's, uh, you know, it's, it's a, uh, an actual error. It's not a typo, it's just a flat out an error. And typos happen, all right? Amazon took down a big chunk of S3 earlier this year with a typo. Uh, you know, and that was obviously them having a typo. Uh, but uh, there's also some really interesting stuff. Uh, we saw all the traffic in Europe. Uh, Germany is a big fiber switching hub. Uh, we saw basically all the traffic that goes through their route through St. Petersburg for about an hour earlier this year. Uh, that was just accidental, I'm sure. It's no big deal. Uh, and so uh, we've seen stuff route uh, from Japan or Korea into China. Uh, we've seen a lot of really weird uh, temporary, temporary disruptions in the force, if you will. Uh, and again, it's just based on a trust model. When you combine this with certificate authorities, 
right? You have the ultimate power for man in the middle because a lot of our, when we talk about controls for this stuff, for BGP route hijack and for DNS cache poisoning, it's that you don't own a legitimate cert. But here you do own a legitimate cert or the equivalent of one because again, uh, we're trusting some of the wrong people in my opinion to, uh, to sign this. So they could steal secure only cookies, harvest credentials, exploit user trust, um, serve malicious updates to software. Have we seen that recently? Yeah, we have, that's right, uh, Petya. Uh, so look, tentative solutions, right? Uh, this is where uh, I had to rework a huge chunk of my presentation because freaking Google. Uh, anyway, uh, so they came to an agreement and the tentative solution says that uh, basically, first off, it's important because it allows both sides to claim victory. Symantec can say, you didn't totally shut us down, we can still issue, sort, issue certs, uh, sort of, right? And Google can say, we found issues, we corrected the issues, there was some punitive action taken, uh, everybody else in the room, you're definitely not gonna get away with this, don't try this if you're another certificate authority. This is ridiculous, right? Uh, they, they're letting Symantec off with at best a slap on the wrist, but game on. Uh, the proposed solution has three phases. First off is register a subordinate CA, then there's a partial, followed by a complete distrust of all Symantec certificates. So Symantec's gonna partner with another CA no later than December 1st, 2017. This original timeline, uh, we were supposed to be done trusting Symantec certs. So as of February, we were supposed to be done by December. Uh, here we've negotiated a lot, uh, and look, over time, between February, or sorry, between uh, March and now, things have only gotten worse, meaning we only know more and more and more about miss issuance and other issues with, with Symantec. So the picture's gotten worse. And then simultaneously, we've moved the timeline back. And, and this does not sound like a winning piece for security. This sounds like a lot what we talk about in like Security Plus and CISSP, where we've compromised basically convenience for security. Right? And that's effectively what we've done, but cool. Uh, regardless, Symantec's gonna partner with another CA and the subordinate CA is gonna be entirely responsible for issuing certificates. And I do give Google mad props here because they say, look, if Symantec gets out of line and starts issuing certificates, or if they press a button there and, and they issue certificates on your behalf, it's your butt, right? We'll, we'll delist you too, right? So that's good, I, I like that, right? Um, and they basically say, hey, look, you're, you're entirely accountable. Now, I don't know what this actually means, right? I mean, I, I say accountability for the win, but I don't know what accountability means in this case because realistically, Symantec isn't being held accountable for this. Uh, they're being stripped of their ability to issue certs on their own, but they're being given a way out to continue making money issuing certificates. And I, I, don't, I don't see this as a real punishment, uh, you know, compared to, uh, you know, compared to the crime. Uh, so, uh, and by the way, lawyers, it's not a crime. It was a, it was a phrase of speech, right? Uh, so tentative solution phase two, partial distrust. April 2018, Symantec certificates issued before June 1st are gonna start displaying SSL errors. The thought is that by 2018, most of these certificates are going to expire anyway, and so this shouldn't be an issue. I'll talk a little about the reality of this a little bit later. In October 2018, Symantec certificates issued before December uh, 1st, 2017, uh, now will start showing SSL er errors. So the idea here is phase one comes in, we've got the older piece, and then phase two comes in and we basically completely distrust uh, Symantec certs, except for the ones signed by or issued by that new subordinate CA. So I did some analysis here and I started with the Alexa top one million sites and we went and retrieved SSL certificates and we can start to look at certificate changes over time. Uh, we grabbed the full certificates, we wanted to allow the analysis of the data uh, that we didn't think was relevant before and I'm happy I did this because what I thought was relevant at first was not the full set of data that I wanted. There's a number of limitations of the approach though. Number one is that I didn't make any attempts to discover uh, HTTPS on anything but 443, all right? So if you're running on some non-standard port, I got nothing. Uh, only HTTPS certs were examined. Uh, there are certainly other certs that exist, uh, secure SMTP, you name it. Websites with SSL certs that aren't in the top, uh, the Alexa top one million, I know a lot of these exist, right? Uh, my mom registered something on GoDaddy recently and she has an HTTPS cert. I don't have it because she's not in the Alexa top one million. She's not that interesting. Uh, Symantec's the most popular in the US, uh, or is most popular in the US, but the Alexa top one million is international. And I think they're probably, Symantec is probably underrepresented in my data set, but I don't know how to fix this, right? So uh, I kind of kicked around some ideas originally and then we finally said, forget it, uh, we'll just go with what we know is an imperfect solution. Like all academics, document the limitations and go, go, go. How prevalent is SSL? Over the top one million, 60%, right? So 625,000 had SSL certs, 
uh, as of uh, two days ago, three days ago. And we've been continuously updating this as we go. Uh, 112,000 of those were signed with Symantec certs, right? So originally the thought was, uh, and I think the uh, hyperbole that we saw initially was one in six certs in the internet is signed by uh, Symantec. It turns out that's actually close, close to true, right? Uh, and uh, this may be uh, the case that uh, it's even disproportionately the top one million because that's better than one in six. Symantec's actually not the biggest in the Alexa top one million. I, I thought they would be. Uh, Komodo actually accounts for slightly more certs. The global sign and GoDaddy, I cannot fathom getting a GoDaddy cert, but okay. Um, I guess Danica Patrick comes in and signs those herself. Uh, regardless, uh, when we took a look at the, uh, the web, uh, basically uh, NetTrust, I think, or NetCraft SSL survey, you can see our numbers are kind of fallen in line, give or take. And NetCraft doesn't use the Alexa top one. I mean, I'm sure they do use the Alexa top one million, but they've got a ton of other sites that they're indexing as well. Uh, meh, I didn't do that because uh, I was lazy. Um, but uh, you can see here Symantec has a bigger slice of the pie in according to what they're reporting uh, than, than what we're reporting. We're showing about one in six. They're showing about, uh, it looks like one in, one in three-ish, right, give or take. Uh, so we talk about how prevalent is Symantec and how do they break out because Symantec has a lot of CAs, right? It's not just Symantec. This is one of the problems. If you take nothing else away from this talk, go back and talk to your business not just your business, but your business partners, right? All the people that you, that you coordinate with. And I know some of you in here are, are working for Fortune 500s and you're coordinating with these little mom and pop shops. And you probably have this taken care of and they do not, right? It's your job as good internet citizens and oh, for your security uh, to actually go and, and kind of follow up on this. Symantec operates a lot of CAs. It's something like 15 or 16 different CAs that we found as we started doing this research that are signed by Symantec Roots. This is a huge deal because all of them are going to be impacted, right? As we look at this, probably the biggest two are GeoTrust and Rapid SSL, right? Neither of which bear the Symantec name directly, right? Uh, so there are a lot of people here. You can see Symantec is way down on the list. And we've talked to several clients who said, no problem, thanks for bringing this to my attention. We don't use Symantec. And we're like, <laughs> uh, actually, you do, as it turns out. And they're like, we use Rapid SSL. I'm like, let me explain to you how PKI works. Let's uh, come, come over to the whiteboard here real quick. And we kind of draw out and show them how indeed this is signed by Symantec, and it is going away too at exactly the same pace. Uh, so my question, my, my theory here is, is that Google was really going to shake Symantec customers. Because if I'm in the Fortune 500, if I'm in, forget Fortune 500, if I'm in any business, uh, I'm not buying a Symantec cert at this point because of uncertainty. I don't like uncertainty. Right? Uh, if I can go with somebody else that I have a good feeling about who's not already in the penalty box, uh, or I can go with Symantec, I, I would go with somebody else. That's just me. That's uh, it's not advice, by the way. Uh, it's just me. And we did some analysis here. Uh, we did our first polls uh, in the very beginning of April. Uh, we look at 112,000 uh, as of uh, two days ago, 115,000 in April. It's 2.3% market shift. And initially I thought, wow, that's huge, right? 2.3% of your business is, is actually pretty significant. I'm gonna tell you that I thought it was gonna be more. I thought by this time we'd be looking at somewhere in the 10 to 20% market shift, to be, to be honest. I thought 2.3%, and it turns out I was extra, extra disappointed because it's not really 2.3%. I'll talk about that in just a second. The numbers are kind of lying here. Uh, I'll tell you this is less than I would have predicted. I don't have data on normal SSL certificate market shifts. I don't think anybody does. Well, some of the CAs probably do, but I don't know over time how do people change certificate authorities. I mean, the lazy thing to do is literally just to pay them again and get a brand new cert issued. You don't have to change anything. It just kind of kind of works. It's the easiest possible thing to do. It's, it's why I think so many people have domains registered with GoDaddy, right? They went and they registered once, and the easiest possible thing to do is let them charge your credit card again. Game on, right? Uh, a lot of people moved away from Symantec, but other people moved to Symantec. And this, my friends, is absolutely mind-blowing. I think, although I have no data to support it, this is the problem, right? Because the majority of them that moved came in via rapid SSL. And I think that's probably what we're seeing there is people are, if they're cognizant of all, at all of the Symantec issue, they don't understand that these are also Symantec. So literally, if you take nothing away from this talk, one, these are Symantec, right? And, and two, Symantec signed a federal government cert that they could use for man in the middle for a period of five years, then failed to do anything about it for five months, right? That's probably the other thing that I would take away from this, because I don't know. Anyway, uh, so 
moving away from Symantec. We saw 4,400 domains move in that period. Uh, where'd they go? Uh, largely Komodo and Let's Encrypt. I'm actually really excited about Let's Encrypt. They sign a lot of certs for malicious domains. I mean, that's just a reality, a lot. By the way, if you're looking to do good cyber threat intelligence type stuff, early warning, go pull the certs that Let's Encrypt is, they, 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 they're very transparent about it, the domains that they're signing certs for, and look, because you can see a lot of them, like grep for the words PayPal or iPhone, and brother, there are some crazy numbers of, of domains there. Uh, so while Let's Encrypt does a lot of malicious uh, signing there, they do it the way they're supposed to per the browser alliance. Uh, they're verifying that you own the domain. The fact that the domain itself you probably shouldn't own is, is a separate issue. Uh, they don't deal with that. Uh, so as far as the movement to Symantec, uh, where do people leave from, right? Uh, turns out a lot of them left from Komodo. A few of them graduated from Let's Encrypt. Uh, but uh, overall, uh, woe sign, right? Now that they're untrusted, some people finally got on the bandwagon between April and July, realized they've been running on a uh, untrusted cert for a number of months and said, hey, where should we go? The next untrusted cert, right? Anyway, uh, so shouldn't certificate lifetimes be going down, right? We, we saw in the beginning where the initial plan, the initial plan as it were, was to lower the lifetime, right, of these certs. I would expect then that as people go and renew these certs, uh, that Symantec would be like jumping through hoops to tell people like, hey, don't register for three years, right, because we can't support that because because the, the Google plan says so. Uh, when we started, uh, the certificate lifetime was 656 days, and the July data set, it drops to a whopping 652. I am thoroughly disappointed here. I really am. I, I'm, I'm extremely disappointed that we're not seeing a, a decrease in the lifetime of the certs. Uh, and, and again, I, I can only ascribe two things to this, right? One, people don't understand they have semantic certs. Uh, although I have to say, as people are reissuing certs through normal expirations, it really irks me that Symantec isn't advising customers, and maybe they are, I don't know. Customers could be ignoring them. But, but it would seem to me that Symantec would be like, hey, this is on the horizon, and we think you might need to deal with the possibility that uh, this is gonna happen, so. They're, they're telling their customers, we're too big to fail, don't worry about it. No, I, I know what they're telling their customers. So, so the, the comment here is they're telling their customers, we're too big to fail, we're not gonna fail, don't worry about it. I, I, I've seen that correspondence through my own customers. It's, Yes, anyway, so, <clears throat> uh, so doing this better, how can we not screw this up again, right? Uh, look, it's easy to ignore the potential impact. Uh, people come back and say there's not a single example of malicious activity as a result of this. That's fine, it's fine for you to say you don't have proof of any of this activity, but we never will, right? Uh, th this is kind of one of these spots where we don't know what the damage is and we likely never will. I don't think we can say it's okay, nothing happened here, because again, we don't know if anything actually did happen, one, and two, the risk here is, is, is the entire internet ecosystem. And I, I'm not, uh, trying to, not trying to do hyperbole here, it really is the entire internet ecosystem. This is not our first certificate fire drill. We dealt with this in Heartbleed, where we had to invalidate lots of certs, and we sucked at it. We did, right? And here again, we're in a position where one of Symantec's arguments consistently over the last several months has been, we can't invalidate and reissue certs. The global ecosystem is not set up to do this, and they're right. That's the one thing I'm gonna back them on. They're right, our ecosystem is not ready for this. We need a plan for dealing with mass certificate revocation and reissue. Because if it's the CA that's being untrusted, you need then to validate yourself with another CA. This takes time, it takes resources, and CAs don't just scale orders of magnitudes larger overnight. So possible solutions. Uh, these are admittedly flawed, but they're possible solutions. We could have a trusted third party pre-validate organizations in case a CA shuts down unexpectedly, kind of like a, a global brain trust of CAs. We kind of have something-ish global browser alliance type thing. Could we have this too? I think that's ripe for abuse as well, so I, I don't necessarily recommend that, but it's, it's a thought. Uh, we could buy multiple certificates and have them on standby in case RCA gets shut down. So I could buy from Symantec and Komodo. I think this is also a bad plan, right? I've actually had customers recommend, or like, well, to hedge our bets, we bought an extra private key from Komodo, and I'm like, no, no, no. Like, where is that thing, right? Is it online someplace? Is it, is it an HSM? Because I'm, I'm worried about, like, keeping control. If it's hard to control your keys as it is, doubling the number of keys makes it twice as hard, right? Uh, that's just math. Uh, we could have third-party CA SWAT teams that can jump in and run a certificate authority when issues are discovered or surge support's needed. So, if Symantec or if the Browser Alliance, if there were this magic uh, group that had a SWAT team, they could have jumped in here and done this. 
Uh, of course, uh, realistically, all these cost money. All of them are going to increase costs. I don't have an answer here, right? Somebody smarter than me is probably sitting in this room who does have the answer. Uh, totally let me know what that is after we're done with the talk. So I'll give you a couple of parting thoughts here. It's 2017, we should not be talking about this. We should not be talking about this. We definitely shouldn't be talking about this months after the initial release. Uh, Symantec should not be telling their customers, it's okay, we're too big to fail. I would as a personal thing, not as a legal thing, Mr. Lawyer, whoever you are, uh, as, as a personal thing, I, I, think it's, uh, I think it's abhorrent that Symantec is talking about the too big to fail piece and not talking about the very real security issues uh, that have been introduced. Uh, I think that that's just bad for the community overall. Uh, I will also say that Google's handling of Symantec is uh, not good either. I think Google deserves to be in the penalty box here. They identified a security issue, they have the power to take action, and they are valuing user convenience and customer convenience over security. And we in InfoSec routinely tell people, don't do that. There's a, a hardware hacking village with the voting machines right down the hall here where that's the whole reason it's there is because of this garbage, right? Symantec should have been rapidly untrusted just like Wosign. Forget this too big to fail stuff. It didn't work for the government, didn't work for the banks. It's not working for CAs either. And then finally, review the CAs that you trust in your browsers. Uh, this, is, this is nutso. Most of them don't need to be there. And, and the way you can convince your management of this is run Bro. Bro Network Security Monitor, NSM. Uh, go through, you can configure Bro with Bro scripts to log all of your SSL certificates and find out who's signing those things. And if you go through over a 30, 60, 90 day period, whatever works for you, 30 is fine for me, and you look and you find out there's only five or six of those trusted CAs signing the certs that you are actually using, get rid of the rest. Maybe you cause one pop-up someplace, right? I will tell you, and I can't share the stories here, but I will tell you, and somebody else sitting in the audience saw an example of this, where we actually are fairly confident that uh, based on some good net witness data, that we got popped like this, right? And it was a big company, right? It was a big target, and they were having trouble getting in, and we're pretty sure that's how they got in because something served a certificate that was trusted but not trusted, right? And I'll just leave it there. That's it. I got like five minutes tops for questions. Sir, speak in the mic because otherwise they can't. There's a mic right there, I think. It's a mic, but. Hello? Yeah, that's good. Okay, it works. So uh, there was a slide that mentioned that um, Symantec performed the modulus uh, comparison between the private key and the public key in the, in the cert. Yep. To validate, uh, but they did not do something else. What is that something else? Do we know? Oh no, that that was it. They they actually didn't validate the private key, right? So the question is, did they? What what else didn't they do besides validating the private key? We're talking about here. Le, uh, yes, this one. It says yeah. uh, perform the modulus comparison, which uh, I thought was uh, was the whole key of this uh, mathematical comparison between the public and the private key. What, what, what did they not do? I, I, it's my understanding they were doing some mathematical shortcut. Uh, I, I know whatever they did is not a full comparison of the key because what he sent them was not the private key. Yeah, so they validated the module as part of. Okay, so just to preserve this on the video here, uh, again, basically that uh, what we're thinking here, although I don't know that we're 100% sure in this case, uh, is that they generated another key with the same modulus. Uh, they validated the modulus rather than validating the key itself, right? Uh, again, you, you can't fake that. If, if you can, I totally want to work with you because that's going to be awesome, right? Uh, we're going to get stuff uh, taken down. Sir? Do you know if the revocation of the U.S. federal gov government certificate actually had any effect? My understanding the revocation process is kind of not working as we wanted it to. Yeah, so did the uh, revocation of the U.S. government cert have any effect? Um, uh, the revocation process definitely is not working the way it's supposed to. Uh, the cert eventually expired, uh, so it's less of an issue now uh, than, it, uh, than it was. Uh, but no, you're right, the revocation process is not working the way it's supposed to. Um, I don't think it had any effect. It eventually expired off anyway. Uh, but it was a cross-signed uh, it was a cross-signed route, uh, and that was one of the arguments that Symantec made is that a lot of government sites were signed with this, and revoking uh, could potentially cause issues there. Uh, again, I, I don't think they understand the math behind this, or some of the people making arguments don't understand the math behind it. Sir, what are your thoughts on uh, cert pinning as a possible solution? Yeah. So what are my thoughts on cert pinning as a possible solution for some of these issues? Um, I, I will say that cert pinning is neat, but in, you know, from a blue team standpoint, I need SSL interception. 
All right, I need SSL interception. And if you're doing cert pinning, uh, I consistently then am overriding that in group policy. I'm overriding that in browser settings uh, because I need to be able to do SSL interception. Uh, I can't run a, a large organization today and do data loss prevention without it being able to see into your Gmail. I mean, this is a reality because uh, if if I can't see it, the attackers know uh, that you know they can use that. Uh, John Strand and his team over at Black Hills put together GCAT. I don't know if anybody's seen this, but it's it's like Netcat except it does basically data exfil. It's a free uh, uh, framework for doing data exfil and command and control over Gmail, right? Uh, what's that? Oh, I thought I heard somebody mention GK. I did uh, Drop Smack a couple of years ago. Uh, same thing with Dropbox, right? Uh, and so if you're doing cert pinning, that's great. It solves one problem, but creates a brand new one, right? Because we can't see into that, and then attackers are going to use those types of techniques. I don't have the right answer here, unfortunately. A so. uh, couple of things. Um, with the modulus, I'm not sure you can actually generate another key unless you've got the Toshin. If you've got the Toshin, you can factor in the first place and get anything, right? I, I am not 100% sure on the. Uh, right, but, for, but again, if, if anybody I, has P and Q, they've got, they can make any key. To, totally, any totally understood, right? Uh, and, and again, this is a spot where his blog post is not 100% detailed uh, for obvious attack repeatability reasons, um, but he confirms that he sent them not the private key and they revoked it anyway, right? And that's, that's the key. What, regard, not to overload the word the key, but that's the, that's the point. Uh, is that they revoked a key they shouldn't have. Uh, Symantec admits as much. Um, I, I think that they were doing some mathematical shortcut there that is not the full, uh, is not the full analysis. And then, you know, RSA's security, you know, if, if we get quantum or if we get advances in factoring, we have to be better at handling certificate revocation generally, and shouldn't that have been baked in in the beginning? Yeah, sure. Uh, so if we have advances in factoring, kind of to repeat this for everybody, if we have advances in factoring, uh, you know, RSA basically, a lot of the security kind of uh, rotates around that. We have to get better at revoking this stuff in the first place. So I agree with that wholeheartedly. You're right. Uh, obviously the SHA-1 apocalypse uh, taught us a lot about that. We accelerated the death of SHA-1 uh, for, uh, for certificate signing because of advances in, uh, well, not factoring specifically there, but advances in... Uh, I think combinatorial mathematics there, right? Uh, we're looking at the collision vectors in SHA-1. So uh, again, I, I, I think you're 100% right on that. We have to have a better way to do this, and, and we don't. So, okay, I think it's a good spot to cut it. Uh, I'll hang out here if anyone wants to talk, well, like in the back or out in the hall or whatever. Thanks for coming. Appreciate your time. See you next year.